Hello friends, I'm Dr. Schultz and today I want to talk to you about poisonous plants. Now at first you might think, gosh, why does he want to talk about poisonous plants? Well really, another name we could use for poisonous plants would be highly medicinal plants. Really, what I want to do for you in the next few minutes is just get you so where you're not scared at all about plants that are out to get you or plants that are going to poison you or plants that are going to kill you. I'd like to dispel those myths and get you where, to where you're comfortable walking outside and looking at all the plants in nature and tasting them and examining them and uh, using them for your health. Okay. Um, you know, the first thing is most of the stories that I hear about poisonous plants are urban legends. They're ridiculous. Uh, even herbalists tell these stories over and over and over again. You know, when I first became an herbalist, I heard a story about this plant right here, oleander. And I heard the same story about poke, about people that stripped the leaves off it and took the stick and put hot dogs on it and then cooked them over a fire. And because of the poisons inside oleander, uh, they were poisoned and they died. Well, I've researched this story and it goes back actually hundreds of years and it is declared officially an urban legend. There's never been any medical reports of anybody found cooking hot dogs. Well, they were probably poisoned by the hot dogs themselves, but cooking hot dogs and poisoning themselves with oleander. In fact, uh, scientific tests have been done putting hot dogs on the oleander, on the poke, cooking them over a fire, and they couldn't get anywhere near enough of the powerful plant chemicals that are in certain plants into the hot dog to poison anybody. They couldn't even make anybody sick. So it's an urban legend, and shame on you herbalists for telling the story over and over and over again. The only reports I could find on herbs killing people, like oleander, were intentional suicides and intentional murders using uh, this plant. Now, second of all, almost all poisonous plants taste bad. They taste really strong. If I were to take a leaf off this oleander and break it and get some of the sap out and taste it, Okay, it's a bitter herb. Nature will talk to you. Nature will tell you. First of all, most plants, forget the word poisonous, we're going to say highly medicinal plants, and I'll explain why in a minute. But most plants that are highly medicinal will first make you nauseous if you consume them. Secondly, they'll make you vomit or give you diarrhea. And this is just your body trying to expel an overdose or a high dose of plant phytochemicals. Chemicals. Okay, now there's been other poisonings with kids eating poke berries, but whenever I read the stories, they were putting three cups of sugar with the poke berries. How could you possibly taste the poke berries with three cups of sugar? We have to teach our children when you go out into nature, be smart, use your intuition. Also, death cap mushrooms. I've read stories in the news about people that poison themselves with them. You know what they did? They cut them up and put them in canned beef stew that's loaded with sugar and loaded with salt. Again, how could you taste nature? Generally speaking, highly medicinal plants or plants like oleander that contain a large amount, a large amount of phytochemicals that are powerfully medicinal, taste bitter. Okay, or you taste them and you go, well, this is not food. Okay, so what's an oleander that's the supposed poison? It's actually a great healing chemical called a cardiac glycoside. Have any of you ever heard of the drug called digitalis? Well, digitalis simply comes from the name digitalis lanata, which is a Greek foxglove, which contains a cardiac glycoside also. That plant isn't considered poisonous. It was used to make one of the greatest, longest lasting heart drugs ever used by the pharmaceutical industry, by medical doctors, called digitalis. And that's a cardiac glycoside. So this plant is just loaded with a cardiac glycoside. Now, I've also heard endless stories about horses munching on this plant, eating it, and poisoning themselves. Again, I've watched horses actually eat this plant, and they spit it out. 
Horses aren't stupid. In fact, in some ways, animals are smarter than us because when something tastes bad, they don't eat it. They don't load it with sugar and salt and put it with canned food. They spit it out. Okay, if it tastes bad, nature's going to talk to you. If it tastes bad, spit it out. It's probably strong medicine and learn more about that plant. And if it tastes good, have it for lunch. Hey, what are you doing way back there? Get up here. I'm not done yet. Okay. Why do I have this stick? Remember, always take a little stick with you, a golf club, something when you go out in the woods, in case you have a little snake or something you have to nudge out of the way. Now, why did I say I'm not done yet? Because people will drive you crazy with stories about poisonous herbs or toxic herbs. And let me dispel more myths, because in the 70s in my clinic, patients used to come in saying, well, I don't eat tomatoes and I don't eat potatoes because they're in the nightshade family and of course deadly nightshade which is also used as a medicinal drug is in the uh, same family with potatoes and tomatoes and I like you got to be crazy okay let's talk about this for a minute we're talking about botanical classification botanical classification classifies plants by their flowers by their flowers okay by certain similar identifying characteristics in the flower it has nothing absolutely nothing to do with the phytochemicals or the chemistry of the plant so to take one plant uh, that has some strong chemicals, medicinal chemicals or so-called poisons in it, and then say, I'm not going to consume any plants in that same family because of nightshade. I'm not going to eat potatoes or tomatoes. Well, you'd have to stop eating every plant in the world because every plant family has highly powerful medicinal plants. I'm not going to say poisonous in that same family. Like, for instance, fennel family, the umbiliferae family that we talked about, uh, has has carrot in it, uh, has celery in it, has cumin in it, but it also has poison hemlock. Okay, again, if you're going to stop eating a food because the family contains one highly medicinal plant, well, then you're just going to have to stop eating. So let's get away from that stupidity and that ignorance of using botanical classifications to not eat a certain food. It's dumb, it's dumb, it's dumb. Plant families have nothing to do with each other except similarity in the flower itself. Okay, remember, you've got to go out into nature and you have to taste it. You have to taste it. Uh, if it tastes sweet, if it tastes fruity, if it tastes nice, uh, this is a plant to eat. If it tastes exotic, well, this is a plant that might, we might use for a spice to also have a medicinal action. And if it tastes highly bitter or highly pungent, well, then maybe we have a medicine in our hands. Herbs are our great blessing. There are gifts from God for our food and for our medicine. Stop thinking about poisonous. Stop scaring yourself. Get outside and enjoy the wonders, the wonders of nature. Hmm. I wonder what this is. Ooh, look at this. <laughs> Only kidding. It's a fig. If it tastes good, my friends, it's food. If it tastes strong, it's medicine. Here, guys, come on. Who wants a fig? No, oh, you guys, are you going to eat it? <laughs> Jesse, Jesse, come on. Here's the boys. Love ya.